guess what? I got my PR, y'all. God. What up everyone, Kyra is Maggie here and welcome back to my channel where I encourage you to submerge yourself in culture and live meaningful lives. Happy New Year every- wait, hold on, let's do this properly. Happy New Year. Man, after such a long, long journey, your girl went from international student to temporary worker to finally being a permanent resident of Canada and I wanted to do this video to serve as a resource to anyone who's thinking about you know getting their application started to give you an idea of what the different streams are and also just to break down how I went about my process and just a disclaimer y'all this is not immigration advice in any way shape or form I'm simply sharing my experience and whatever you can get from it you can then take it with a grain of salt apply it to your situation and seek professional help for sure. So some of you probably follow my channel and subscribe because of this video right here where I talked about how I came to Canada as an international student and I also shared you know how I went about the process to have a successful application to then you know come over study things like that. So I graduated and that was how it led for me being here in Canada working legally and then for me to do the process of applying for my PR. So I won't be going into detail of how I came here as a student because I already have that video. So if y'all want to check it out, watch it after this video. So yeah, let's get right into it. So just to briefly recap for you. So I came to Canada about 2014, went to Newfoundland and Labrador for school. I did a four years degree and then I graduated. And yeah, that was a good time, good time. So after I graduated, for a lot of us international students, we have two options. So you're either going to decide if you want to go back to school. So that means you would have to reapply for another study permit. Again, to even get one successfully, that would mean, mean that you need to have an um, acceptance letter from your school of choice and into a program. Or you can choose to apply for what they call a postgraduate work permit, which is what I did. So a postgraduate work permit is what allows us to work legally in Canada. And because I did a four year program, I got the maximum amount of time that they give on it, which is three years. So if you did your program for just one year, though, it's just going to be one year. So just something for you to keep in mind as well, because this will also determine the type of stream that you would apply for your PR through. So in this video, I'm going to be breaking down the different streams how I applied the process I took to apply and the different you know costs involved the process time and just little tips of how you could probably help yourself with a successful application so off the top of my head the main streams that I can remember are the family sponsorship where basically a family member sponsors you you have the what's it called sorry I have to use my notes here the express entry for skilled workers and this includes the Canadian experience class which is CEC the skilled federal worker and the federal skilled trades you also have self-employed startup visa caregiver refugee and provincial nomination which based on the province that you're in every province has their own process of how that works so it's important for you to know how it works depending on the province you're in because these are just a few of them i'm going to leave a link in the description box below for you to go check out the rest of the list so you have an idea of the full scope of what different kinds of ways you can apply for your pr so before I actually talk about the stream that I applied through, I want to talk about first how I even went about the process to get started. So I decided that instead of trying to figure out everything on my own, nothing is wrong with asking for help. So I asked some friends that I know already um, applied for their PR, were successful, got advice here and there of how to go about it. And many of them actually told me, you know, if you could get an immigration consultant to help you, that is probably like to your benefit because they can, they understand like some of the loopholes or just information that is out there that you probably won't be aware of that could avoid you having your application rejected. So I took that advice because I only have money to apply one time people. So I actually reached out to my friend Shanda. Some of you might remember her from this video that I did about people of Belize. At the time, she was the international student coordinator at my school that I went to. And she was someone I trusted and she's now 
an immigration consultant so it only seemed natural for me to reach out to her to be the one that I would have guide me on this process especially because she actually helped to guide me with getting my study permit and she helped me to guide me with my postgraduate work permit so I mean at this point I think she knew what she was doing so why not so I reached out to her and you know we were able to do a consultation and during the consultation you were able to have an idea of what documents you would probably need to get together right now that are things that you um, already have in place i'll mention types of documents that were needed later on in the video also whatever fees are involved so outside of the immigration consultants fee there is also fees that you need to prepare for that has to do with the application itself so pretty much after that i knew i was in good hands she was able to communicate with me what you know stream i was going to apply through all the documents i needed and it was really important for me to be on the ball with being you know in communication with her and also staying organized that when she asked me to do something or send her something i would send it immediately so that everything can just fall into place like quickly and smoothly also because i'm not her only you know client so it's very important that you reach out and also follow up quickly with whoever is helping you with your application so which one did i apply for so i applied through the canadian express class which is also known as cec and this was through the express entry slight correction there y'all it's actually called the canadian experience class and this one, one of the main requirements for it is that you had to have at least one year work experience in Canada. So um, this is usually the most popular stream for a lot of international students because it makes sense. We have studied in Canada, so you know, getting a job afterwards, hopefully in our field or something connected to it is usually ideal. And since this is one of the main requirements, it just makes sense. Um, so other things that are required because this one is really based on like a point system. I'm not sure if all of them are based on a point system, but with this one, it was heavily involved with a point system as well. So I got points for my age, the fact that I went to school in Canada, the fact that I had one year work experience, and what else was there oh the english language test that i had to take yes a native english speaker had to take an english test to prove that she's knowledgeable in english y'all but i digress yeah so those are some of the things that were required so i know i don't really talk about my career or my job on this channel so i'm actually doing a collab video with another youtuber who does finance career and lifestyle related content and you'll find out what that video will be about but what i will basically say in a nutshell is that from the very get-go when i knew i was you know going to graduate and i had an idea of the different steps to take to get permanent residence in canada I knew that I had to be very strategic even with the jobs I was applying and also accepting. So I know sometimes people think that, you know, as newcomers, we're like looking down on certain jobs and things like that. But honestly, it has nothing to do with looking down on jobs. It just has to do with the fact that a lot of jobs, if they don't meet a certain requirement in what they call the NOC um, qualification, so that's a category of like for skilled workers, then we wouldn't be considered and get the points required for this particular way of applying for your PR. So for me, I was looking for jobs like six months before I even graduated, just having an idea of what was out there. And I kind of knew that I wanted to move to Toronto anyway. So all of that was within my, my plans. But more to come in that video, so just look out for it. So apart from the whole points thing, another thing that was important was I had to ensure that I didn't have like a criminal record, so like no police records, and that I didn't have any serious medical um, issues because those are two things that they also look at to like basically admit you into Canada as a permanent resident. So um, for this, I had to do a police check, not only in Canada, but you have to also do one for any country that you've lived in since you were 18 years old. So for me, the last place that I actually lived in was Belize. And so that was the country that I pretty much had to get one from. And the way I went about doing that is because I still have good relationships with people back there. Luckily for me, I had a friend's mom who was able to help me out with getting the application, getting it, you know, submitted, getting it back to me so that I could attach it to my application when the time was right. Another thing that I want to mention with this is you're going to have to sacrifice a lot during this period and I'm not just talking about cost wise, I'll mention the cost later on in the video, but 
for me to also not have my application delayed, it was important that while my application was already in process that I did not travel outside of Canada. And that's because if I did any traveling while my application was in place, then I would have had to submit any kind of police record for those countries that I went to, I believe. So just something to keep in mind as well, y'all. So before you actually can apply for your PR, you have to be invited to apply for your PR. And how that works is the first thing you usually do is that you would submit a profile and your profile has attached, you know, all the different documents, which I'll mention later on and all things like that. So remember how I mentioned that I got points for different things? So points is important because they are going to be doing a draw and depending on how much your points are, if you don't meet the criteria, then you won't, you know, be invited in. I believe at the time that I applied, the points at the time was, I think, 450 was like the minimum that they were accepting and my points was like a 470. Yay, Maggie! So, um, yeah, so all the points, so as I mentioned, your age, the fact that you worked in Canada for at least a year, you went to school in Canada, and also your points for how much you got on your um, the language skills test as well was important for that. So my profile was submitted in May of 2020, and then July of 2020 is when I got invited to apply for my PR. And that's when it's pretty much, you know, just a waiting game and just following up with whoever your person is who's representing you to see if there are any additional documents or have they heard back, anything like that. I'll talk about the processing time a bit later on. All right, so I'm going to be moving on to the cost involved, everyone's favorite topic. Yay, let's talk about money. So um, I'm going to be breaking it down. And just to also note that at the time of this recording and whenever the video would be uploaded and that you find it, the cost can change. So the government can change it at any time. So just be sure to consult the website for any changes like that because these fees might not be the same when you decide to apply. All right, so the first one was the application processing fee. And this was pretty much something that had to be paid up front when you actually submitted your PR application. And this was $825. The next thing was the right of permanent resident fee, which was $500. And you could choose to actually pay this along with the application fee. Um, I think what I was told was that if you weren't successful with your PR application, that is something that they reimbursed you because that fee that you pay is basically when you get approved. So you had the choice of paying it up front as well or just waiting until you got accepted and then you would pay that. I chose to just pay everything in one just to get that money off my head. Um, biometrics fee. So that was $85. Um, for a police record, luckily for me, my friend's mom didn't actually have me pay this, but just check with the country that you need or countries that you need to get a police check from and have an idea of how many days it would take to process it in like their normal processing time versus express and have an idea of how long that um, police record is also valid for. Just so if you know that you're from a country that they kind of take super long to process things, that kind of helps you with your process that you're not stressing over things not getting to you on time. Um, so yeah. The medical exam, yeah, for them to like juke up, juke up my hand and take look of blood and do one look at x-ray, $220. And with this as well, it wasn't that you went to like your regular family doctor or anything like that. You had to go to an immigration, I think what they call it, like physician, like one of the licensed immigration physicians to do this. And there are sometimes very limited ones. So depending on where you live, you would have to do a Google search and then you would have to make sure you book your appointment and just be on the ball with these things because sometimes stuff cannot be available depending, right? And the next thing was the English test. So there were two types of English tests that I could have done. So they had the cell pep, which is what I did. And you also have the owls test. And this was $280. <laughs> the irony of it all. And last but not least, if you are going to go ahead with hiring an immigration consultant, they have their fees as well. I'm not going to reveal how much I pay just because every immigration consultant is going to have a different fee based on how many people, um, also the stream that you're applying for. So yeah, that part I won't really re um, reveal to y'all, but just know that it will be at least a thousand dollars. So budget for a thousand or more actually budget for yeah budget for at least a thousand so don't be surprised if you hear that it's over a thousand dollars for immigration fees 
The next thing that I'll talk about, so what are the documents that you need during this process? So I'm actually going to leave a link also in the description box for this, just because there might be more, but for what I had to give, I had to give copies of my passport, um, my transcript to show proof that I went to school in Canada, the results from my English test, because that's how they did the points as well, like added up my points for that. Um, what else? Um, a letter from my job that basically outlines that my job was in a knock requirement like skill worker requirement um, digital photos um what else the medical exam the police record and pay slips were also required so yeah link in the description again if you want to know the full list of possible documents that you might need so finally how long would this take now with regards to what's going on right now with the pandora box and it all it can, I guess it could vary because right now, as you can imagine, everything has been backed up with like anything that has to do with administration wise. So normally for the stream that I apply through, it's six months or less. But here are some things that you also need to take into consideration that might delay your application. So if you, for example, I mentioned this before, if you traveled outside of the country while your application was in place, your application would be delayed. If you decided to add a spouse onto your application, now this is something people might choose to do um, if they have a significant other, so they kind of cut out that process for themselves. Also, the fact that it won't um, affect your points anyway, so it's like a good decision to make if you want to. So that would also determine like, you know, if your application is delayed. This is something I did as well. By the way, if you're going to think about, you know, adding your spouse to your application, just expect for them to want to see evidence of like your relationship for how long it was. So for who not like take pictures and whatnot, and start take pictures, all right? Again, this is not immigration advice. And what else? Oh, how long you take to submit documents, how on the ball you are and things like that. Because one thing that I will mention is because I was so diligent and organized and i listened to what shanda told me i was able to get my medical exam done my um, english test done and all of those different things before everything had shut down so i think had i not done all of that before we got shut down in 2020 i probably wouldn't have been able to get everything in and i don't think immigration was extending anyone's you know work permit for the sake of oh you didn't get to do this because of the you know pandora box oh yeah we, we will help you out i i don't think they do that so just keep that in mind as well and i know a lot of people have been affected by this so i recognize how blessed i am in this situation as well um one thing i forgot to mention under the talk of like cost is it is good to have an idea of all the costs involved because it allows you to budget properly that if there are some things that you have to pay out of pocket, you have the money up front or if you have a credit card that you can put it on and you work your way off paying it off, that is also good. But just note that something like the immigration fees, that's not something like for your consultant, that's not something that you would more than likely be able to pay with a credit card. So what helped me in paying for some of this apart from saving and budgeting was when I got back whatever tax refund um, for that year, instead of splurging it and buying a bunch of stuff, I used it wisely to go towards this process because I not have so much money. It was a pretty penny in total for what I paid for this entire process. So after all that waiting, the stress, the anxiety, your girl finally got the news on May. It was in May of 2020 that I got the news. Here I go again. I actually got it in May 2021, not May 2020. So let me actually tell y'all how it went. Okay, so this is important, especially for those who don't like to answer private number like myself. This was a good lesson for me. So I was getting ready for work one morning and I got a call from a private number. I don't usually answer private number. We not answer no private call. But <clears throat> so then <laughs> my man just told me to answer it. So I answered it and it was like immigration related and at first I thought it was suspect because I don't know if it's just me was getting like scam call during the Pandora box about like my insurance number and all kind of thing. But I thought that was that's what it was. Turns out it was legit. I don't remember how I confirmed it, but it was legit. So, you know, she just confirmed some information like where I lived, my name, and then she confirmed my email address as well because that's how she was going to send the actual like approved like letter 
to say like yeah you got approved and you would need that until you get your physical card so when she said these words y'all congrats you are officially a permanent resident of canada or something like that like i don't even know how to explain the feeling but i just thought of like all the sacrifices like this moment here like it was so worth it and i get why so many people like sacrifice so much to get to this point because so many doors are going to be able to open if i want to go back to school i can go back now and not pay international student fees if i want to get a grant for my business i can more than likely have a chance now because now i meet one of the requirements so i definitely went to work that day feeling super super happy <laughs> so if you all have any questions let me know in the comment section below what i could try to do is get shonda to do a video with me to answer your questions so leave them in the comment section below and i'll see what i can do for y'all so this is this is the new way of how we're going to end our videos off now so i will see you in the next one bye, bye.